How's it going, everybody? Welcome back to the Seattle Supersonics My NBA Expansion Series. We are here in off season number one. Last time out, you guys saw we finished out the season, saw all the rewards. We watched the finals go down. The 76ers and Joel Embiid finally got their championship they've been looking for. And we're going to go ahead and extend or finish this off season or start this off season, I should say, with some player retirements, a couple of bigger names. Udonis Haslam finally calls it quits this man unk haslam has been on the heat doing nothing for almost a decade last time he averaged more than five points per game would have been um back in 2011 so over a decade since he's actually done anything um actually meaningful for this heat team but andre iguodala is another big name to retire he's had a few down years since his big years in uh, golden state there where he averaged and won that finals mvp and a couple other bigger names down the list here i'm not gonna make any of these guys come out of retirement i mean most of them are on the older side of things eric gordon's 35 taj gibson i didn't even know he was in the league still at 39 i think i'll make danilo Gall gallinari come back because i mean he's 35 he's still got some fresh legs ricky rubio is going to come back at 33 um, I'm just trying to make it a little bit more reasonable. And then also I saw up here, I'm going to make Kevin Love um, and I'll make Eric Gordon come back just because those guys had roles on rosters where they were actually playing a decent role. Um, but that's going to be all of the retirements there for the players. As far as actual coaches go, Jay Hernandez, the head coach of the Brooklyn Nets is going to retire as well as they got hit by a lot. Kevin Ollie the perimeter defense coach and adam caporn their shot doctor and we saw a few other guys retire as well as we now can go into the league meetings we're going to keep everything the same and we're going to go to the biggest moment right now of the offseason the nba draft lottery after those losses at the end of the year we are projected top 10 so that's gonna be interesting to see and let's see where the boss land for us the trailblazers are gonna stand at 16 they had the number three overall pick last year we're able to grab scoot henderson so i'm wondering who they'll be able to take this year as the Cavs stand at 15 they are going to stay there as well with the 15th pick their 20th lottery selection all time as most of us know this Cavs team obviously probably shouldn't be in the lottery but you've got to think we added two expansion teams so the lottery is going to be two spots bigger as we now get to the 14th pick starting the original lottery the New Orleans Pelicans are going to stand at 14 so nothing crazy going on just yet the Pelicans will be able to keep that selection the Kings are going to stand at 13 that one's interesting this is why um the lottery is so important nobody's jumped up yet and the spurs stay i was kind of scared they were going to jump up and get another generational player but it looks like they still have a chance they have that toronto pick um that could be very big for the spurs this year now the pistons stay at 11 and nobody has moved yet um i'm wondering if we will be able to jump up as seeing as nobody else has jumped up we have a 3.7 percent chance to jump up with the draft lottery the seattle sonics will be selecting 10th overall that's a bummer but i'm looking to make a deal elsewhere for a late first round pick if possible um as we see the magic they stay at nine man this is a um very boring lottery nobody's moved up yet watch it be the thunder the thunder are going to be the teams to jump up and how'd i know that means the thunder are in the top four the team that has all these young pieces just what they needed is another top four selection the jazz are going to sit at seven um and poor pacers they fall out of the top four as well the hornets are going to jump up they have moved into the top four so now we know two teams in the top four um the hornets and the thunder the spurs now in the top four as well as the rockets sit at five so the spurs have 12 six and now a top four selection can the wizards get lucky washington's in purgatory and they're going to stay there washington never bad enough to get the number one pick but never good enough to be in the playoffs as they sit at number four and the last three teams actually have all jumped up the timberwolves are going to be a top two selection the thunder get number three via houston that one's interesting to see there as they have the third and the 23rd overall pick now the Timberwolves looking for that number one overall selection. They will not get it. They sit at number two, and that is going to leave the Charlotte Hornets 
with the number one overall draft pick there as they jump from what number seven into the top 10 and this is what the draft order is going to look like for this year's draft we have the 10th pick right now but we're going to be looking for another first round pick but we have to make a few moves as you can see um, we need to bring in an assistant general manager that could be a uh, a good person to work with here we could try and offer this guy um, as you can see we're going to be sticking with head coach milan mack um, he was good not great but he was good enough um, and i am going to bring in a big man coach just because um, I think our big men were getting exploited way too much there in the low post. And we're going to go ahead and get out there and get Greg St. John if we can bring him in. Um, it's looking like he is going to probably decline us once we get there. Um, let's see. Greg St. John is still tentative, still tentative. He is still tentative. Jeez, what the world is going on here? And yes, he rejected us. So that's not a big deal. We don't really need the coaching too much as we will head into the draft combine. Got a chance to look at how all the best players in the draft perform. And if you take a look at our roster right now, nobody under contract really. Iodison moves on a two-year deal. Um, Javon Carter's got a year left. Kennedy Chandler and J.D. Davidson, who never really got on the squad at all, will be leaving. Killian Hayes, we're going to have to re-sign him. I believe he may have a team option. Maybe. Um, no, he does not. So we're going to have to re-sign Killian Hayes if we want to bring him back. That's going to be an interesting decision. Um, we've got our shooting guards locked up. We've got our small forwards. All of them need to be re-signed. Whoever we want, they're going to have to be re-signed. Maxi Kleba's on a multi-year deal, and he's going to be somebody that I look to trade, no doubt about it, before he just um, completely, completely regresses. And as you can see, all of our centers are going to be uh expiring there so we're going to be looking at a few positions here we're going to be looking at point guard small forward power forward and center um especially all of those positions because those are the main ones that we will need as you can see the fastest guy at this point guard position is going to be lawrence reed we've been predicted to get him out of gonzaga reed's a, a good athlete stanley reed though is a sneaky athlete as well as we can see um, exactly who is the best at standing NBA threes. We're going to see Lawrence Reed is technically the best shooting point guard in the this draft from the combine. He's also the best moving three-point shooter at that point guard position. But don't don't forget about Alton Kelly. Um, he's not a very high draft projection. He's maybe in the lottery, maybe. Um, but he's got a good shooting stroke too. As you can see, they hit a couple of mid-range shots. Francis Watts was a good mid-range shooter. Um, we're going to go ahead and see who's got the best vertical. I really like athleticism at the small forward position. Frederick Rose is impressive, but he's not nearly the good enough shooter that we would like. Um, I would like to get somebody who can shoot a little bit better than, what, 11 out of 25 um, from three-point land in the NBA. And he's not the fastest guy, as you can see. Um, that's pretty much going to be it. We're going to go ahead and go to the pre-draft workouts. We can invite a few of our own um, and I'm going to be interested in Lawrence Reed. Devin Atkins is definitely a guy that I'm interested in. We've got to go around the pick that we're projected to select, I would say, because a lot of these guys could uh, really um, kind of sway in their projection. Stanley Reed's a guy that I'm interested in. Um, let's see who else at the small four position. Not a lot of people that are going to go high here. Uh, I'm just going to go ahead and go off of who is projected the highest of these positions because there's not a lot. Frederick Rose is there as well. Um, the power four position, Lombros Papadopoulos is there. Um, he has a very wide range. 14, 8, and 21 are his projections. We'll also go ahead and add Marion Rice. And then center position, um, it's going to be tough. We'll actually take Marion Rice off there. I want to get at least one of these centers in there. Um, and it's looking like we're not going to be able to get one of the top guys. Um, but I am going to go for Carson Barker. And let's go ahead and see what happens here. The point guards we went after the fastest was undoubtedly Stanley Reed. He also um, is second in the lane agility time, which is led by Lawrence Reed, who's pretty fast. So um, they could be brothers, honestly as they uh disappeared for whatever reason uh hello okay maybe we can't do that unfortunately can we go back and look at that 
and for whatever reason the players have disappeared now um okay well that's a little immersion breaking but before we jump into the draft officially we're gonna have to take a look over here who do they have us taking first off they've got carson barker going number one overall this guy has all-star potential written all over him um he's averaged 15 14 and three blocks a game all while shooting good from the field not so great from the three-point line um, at Oregon State. Lawrence Reed now is jumping up into the top two. That's disappointing. I was hoping we could maybe get him to slide down to number 10. They right now have us taking Devin Atkins at number 10, a 6'2 point guard um, who's shooting very well from the field. He's averaging 16 and a half, 11 assists, two and a half steals, 42% from the field and 43% from three point land. As far as the other people have us going, Terrell Nance not a three-point shooter but he's a dominant center he's averaging 16 14 basically 15 rebounds a game and three and a half blocks as you can see and then also nba.com has lawrence reed falling to us i would be very happy if lawrence reed was going to fall to number 10 but we are going to now enter the 2024 nba draft this one's going to be an exciting one starting off with the charlotte hornets they are going to have an interesting selection to make as you can see um they're going to have their pick of whoever they would like but the main problem is a lot of the best players are going to be centers here this year we've got three centers in the top five and the hornets have a couple of point guards they've got a forward and they've got a center so i'm wondering if they'll go ahead and draft him or a center like carson barker and then move him over to the power forward position to play with Mark Williams. But still, we'll have to wait and see as the selection is in. And with the number one overall pick in the 2024 NBA Draft, the Charlotte Hornets select Ricardo Chavez out of Nevada. The 6'5 point guard, 200, and 200 pounds. Chavez is definitely, definitely an athlete. He is a two-way level threat. He can knife his way into the paint. Sitting at a projected 81 overall, he has a good mid-range and three-point shot, but his driving dunk leaves a lot to be desired despite being 6'5". This guy can run with the ball. He is very fast, and his defense is no joke either. Number 18 or 18 years old, being the number one overall pick, Ricardo Chavez is an interesting selection there as we now are going to head into the second overall pick. The Minnesota Timberwolves have sent their selection in. Who do they choose to play alongside Anthony Edwards and Carl Anthony Towns and Rudy Gobert with the 20 in the 2024 NBA draft? The second pick by the Minnesota Timberwolves will be... It is Carson Barker. So the Timberwolves have an interesting selection here. They are going to have to make a decision between Barker and Rudy Gobert or even Barker and Carl Anthony Towns. Barker is not a three-point shooter at all, sitting at a 63-point shooting statistic. And now he is going to have to steal or fight for some playing time with Rudy Gobert and as well as Carl Anthony Towns. So Barker brings a unique skill set for this Timberwolves team as they take that selection at number two. Now the Oklahoma City Thunder are going to select at number three. A interesting pick here. They might even trade it. No, they're going to go ahead and select DJ Malone, a 73 overall. That is no doubt the lowest overall we have seen just yet. Malone has a 71 three ball not a very good player he's 21 years old out of ucla but he has okay potential um this guy is going to have to make a big leap if he wants to live up to this expectations here at number three um and with the controversy around josh giddy and a new contract in mind it's possible that dj malone will serve as a bit of an insurance policy around josh giddy will now go to the washington wizards they didn't get a top three pick but they did still have, or do still have a chance at one of the best centers in the draft and that's a position they desperately need as they go ahead and take ellis wesley a 79 overall 22 year old center out of evansville but this guy can shoot it despite being seven feet tall and look at his statistics this guy looks like a stud he can protect the paint he can rebound he can shoot the three Man, this guy's going to probably be good for the Wizards over there as we now get to number five. The Rockets are going to take Devin Atkins. That one's a bit shocking as we were not expecting Atkins to go that high, but he's a 77 overall. Decent athleticism finishing in the paint. 
decent shooting. Devin Atkins looks like he's going to be a stud as his defense as well is good for a 6'2 height point guard. That's not that surprising there for the Rockets. They got rid of Kevin Porter Jr. Maybe they expected that they would need another point guard on the roster. So now let's see where the Spurs decide to go. Atkins is off the board. A couple of point guards off the board. Now the Spurs are selecting another seven-footer to play alongside Victor Wembanyama, Aaron Harris. Aaron Harris is the 7-2 center out of UNLV. He is a 79 overall. He can't shoot at the greatest, but it's sitting at a 66 shoot three-point shot. He can still shoot it and make you question your defensive tactics on him. He's definitely, definitely going to have to play center over Victor Wembanyama. We're probably going to move Vic over to the power forward just so they can both play on the court at the same time as the Spurs make that selection. Now number seven, the Jazz are going to select Terrell Nance. I like it, I like it, but can Nance hit the three-point shot? He cannot. So Walker and Kessler and Terrell Nance are going to have to play side-by-side -side there at the power forward and center positions with Lori Markinen. Playing at that small forward position as we see the Indiana Pacers on the clock. They select Desmond Howard, a UCLA alumni as well. He played alongside DJ Malone. They were the power tangent there. Uh, but Howard, not the greatest shooter. He does provide some defense and some ability to get steals. And now we're one selection away from making our pick, as you can see, the Magic are on the clock. They're going to select Jake Lynch. They take a straw on another point guard. This Magic team has Cole Anthony, Markel Fultz, Anthony Black, and now Jake Lynch on their roster. That one is shocking there. That is an interesting selection. Lynch, don't get me wrong, he's a good player, but he can't shoot the three ball all that well. Um, his driving ability is impressive for a 6'2 guy, and his defense is uh, average at minimum. But man, that might have been the worst selection so far. As we now get a chance to get on the board as we are sitting at number 10, and we will be able to make our selection. Going off of pure predictions, Lawrence Reed is still here, and that's the guy, I'm not going to lie, I really wanted, but let's go ahead and check out if there are any interesting trades for this 10th overall pick sitting here. Um, and we have Terrell Nance is there. We could trade for him, but they're asking for Scotty Barnes is there as well. That one doesn't make too much sense. Yeah, there's nothing too big going on there. So we are going to go ahead and take the guy that I wanted all along. 6'4 point guard, Lawrence Reed out of Gonzaga. He's an excellent three-point shooter. He's only 21 years old. Um, he's got an all-star potential or at minimum, sweet Lou Williams. We're going to go ahead and select him. Number three is his jersey number, as you can see. And let's see where he officially stands. Lawrence Reed is a 77 overall. He's got a 93 ball. What a stat there. 78 driving layup. Not great driving to the rim, but he can still get it done. Let's go ahead and see what his defense is looking like as a point guard. He's pretty fast. Not that shocking in his defense. Oh, man, his defense is pretty bad. Uh, but he can get a steal every now and then. I was hoping for a little bit better defense, but 96 speed. That's impressive. I will not lie. Lawrence Reed might have a chance to be the starting point guard of the future as we are now getting out of the lottery or getting close to the end of the lottery. We're going to go much faster on these last few selections. James Owens gets selected at 11 as I now want to see exactly what trade finders got. We're going to go ahead and look. Let's see who has the next few picks. I would love to trade up into the top lottery again if I could. Um, maybe with the Cavaliers. That's an interesting one. They're a team that should still be a contender. Um, so it would be interesting to see how exactly they would look in uh, look at this selection sitting at number 15. Um, I can't trade for theirs. Let's see who else is sitting up here at number 18. Um, can't trade for that one. I have a feeling it's going to say that for all of them. Um, let's see. Uh, let's see somebody. 16 for the Blazers. You cannot trade for Clippers. You can, but they're pretty low down on the list. Let's see who else. Um, Raptors at 12 could be interesting. Is there anybody they would be interested in? We have only a few guys under roster. Maxi Kleba and a second round pick for the 12th overall pick 
um, and they are not going to accept that. So let's see where we can stand on this. Actually, since I'm technically controlling these teams, I'm going to have to go for um, their, uh, well, they're going to have that selection already. Um, I'm going to have to go for a trade finder. Uh, they want our first round pick next year. This one's interesting, but I don't want to give up multiple first round picks. Um, and I like this one with Javon Carter, but let's go ahead and see where else we can stand. We're sitting at 22 maybe for the Mavericks. Um, let's see. We can get rid of somebody. Um, Brandon Boston. If we can get rid of Javon Carter in a top 10 pick for the 22nd overall pick, that is fine with me. There we go. We do get a trade to go up. It's later in the first round, so let's go ahead and run through that. Ronnie Tucker goes to the Spurs with their third pick in this lottery. The Kings are going to take Shane Long, a big center there. Marion Rice, dang, I was hoping he would fall. Um, I liked his game there. Sammy Carson goes to the Cavaliers. Um, the Blizzard have a pick coming up. Dick Bonner, Richard Bonner from Illinois State going to the Trailblazers. And now the Blizzard are going to select Frederick Rose. Dang, that was the guy I was hoping I could get there. He has the most athletic build in this draft. As you can see, the Miami Heat go with Edward Blake. He's a good prospect. The Hawks are now on the border. Excuse me, the Celtics, they go with Clarence White. And um, let me see here. I think the Celtics just got a major steal. Yes, they did. A 75 overall center who can shoot the ball. Come on now, just what we needed to give the Celtics another good player like that. As we're pretty close to our next pick, Freddie Smart goes off the board. Lombros, dang, Lombros goes off the board. Let's see what his overall was there at 21. Um, I was hoping he would fall. Lombros, yeah, 74 overall. Um, he can shoot it okay. He can drive okay. I just liked his potential. Um, he's not the best looking prospect. As you can see, we now sit back on the board. We've got a chance here. Radoslav Turk, another uh, wide range there. Lawrence Mills is still on the board, a 6'5 shooting guard. Um, Christian Booker is still here. Alton Kelly is still here. We've got a lot of guards on the board. Um, Trace Day and Jonathan Webb are there as well. Trace Bates is here. But you feel like you've got to go with the best guy available in Lawrence Mills out of Santa Clara, a shooting guard. What is his overall? He is a 74. I'm, I'm fine with that. 19 years old. He's got a good three ball. He's okay driving to the basket. Can his defense be good? Because both of these guys have been terrible. Oh, man. Another bad defender um, on, in this draft. We're going to have to look at defense, really, when we go into that second round. As we're going to fly through the rest of this first round. The uh, the Thunder are going to take Barney West with their second pick in this draft. The Bulls are going to select Jonathan Webb. I'm interested to see what he ended up doing. Um, Jonathan Webb was undoubtedly the best shooter. He has a 90 overall, so we didn't miss out on much because Lawrence Reed has the same um, overall shooter. Radoslav Turk, a guy I just looked at, he is going to have. Uh, let's see what he's got. Radoslav has a... 73 overall, not a good shooter at all. I was expecting better, but he's got some athleticism out of Slovenia there. I mean, he's a decent defender. He would not have been a bad pick for us um, since we've drafted a few bad defenders. We're just going to fly through here. Caden Cameron, the 7-2 center out of Richmond, goes there. The Knicks select Preston Baylor out of Maine. Now we're rounding out this first round and a couple more picks. Oscar Black, he fell all the way down. That is Ellis Wesley's teammate at Evansville. Would have been cool if they could have ended up on the same team, but Ellis Wesley is going to Washington. Oscar Black will find himself in Memphis, as you can see. Daryl Saunders, another guy I was high on there, um, goes there. Francis Watt to New Orleans. Finally, the 76ers, the defending champion, select Christian Booker to play alongside Tyrese Maxey as they are now going to lead us into the second round. We don't care about this too much. We're going to simulate to our next selection um, Alton Kelly is going to be there. Um, well, I thought we were going to simulate to our next selection, as I said. Um, apparently, we're not going to. Uh, we should have a pick here at, like, number 41. There we go. Just these guys flying off the board. Owen Henry is a guy we did see earlier. Um, Stanley Reed, he fell all the way down here to the second round. He was projected to go in that first round at one point in the mock drafts. And as you can see, 
Um, we've got some questionable, questionable people left. Armando Reyes, a good shooter, maybe a good athletic guy. Um, we could go with Trace Bates, the 6'8 power forward. Could he be a good shooter? He's got okay three-point shooting, it seems. Um, anybody else we've looked down here at? Uh, Marshall Lyons. I saw him at one point. He's another three-point shooter. Um, I want to get somebody who can play some defense, really. And uh, that's what I'm mainly looking at. We didn't end up grabbing a center, which is going to be an interesting technique. Um, but Trace Bates has a chance Vlad Osic is Olic is here but I don't think he's going to be able to shoot all that well but maybe his defense can kind of outweigh that um even though he's projected to go very low um let's see where sports nation or sports news has these guys going they've got Grant Graham going here um they've got Tyrone McLeod is going here at 31 um he is a seven foot center who can rebound can he protect the paint that looks like maybe his abilities eric bell is a guy that i would like to grab on uh, i don't know who we should take here with the second overall pick um we're gonna grab trey spades probably maybe let's see vlad olich is there seven two center you can never go wrong with out of serbia um let's go ahead and see what his overall is and we are pretty much done with this first year's draft he's a 71 overall Three-point shot, not very good. Can he at least protect the paint? No, not at all. Uh, he's probably, if we're being honest, not going to make the roster. Um, I wouldn't mind. Can I even trade him? Like, can I trade for another second-round pick? Um, and uh, we can give up a future second-round pick? How, how do these guys... How does this work? Can I trade one of the guys I just drafted? Uh, apparently not. Um, it's all right. We'll, we'll sign somebody and we're just going to go to the end of the draft. And that is going to wrap up our first draft this year. They, it was very successful as we'll go ahead and we'll go ahead and see the rookie signings. Um, Vlad Olich, not really a fan. He's 23 years old. Can't rebound, can't block. He's not fast. We're probably going to let him walk. Um, I thought maybe give him a shot. Uh, but we are going to sign Lawrence Reed and Lawrence Mills as well. We got rid of Maxi Kleba, which is most important. And that's where we're going to end this episode. Next time out, you guys will see us do free agency and all of that and wrap up this offseason. But as for now, I hope you guys did enjoy this exciting beginning to offseason number one. This is the new roster we're working with. Well, actually, we've got a few guys still on here that won't be on here. But... That's what it looks like for right now. Thank you all for watching this one. Hope you all have a great day and I'll catch you next time. Peace.